What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We are back looking at another team named for the Six Nations today. Uh, today is going to be about France. This is the potential winners in my opinion. Things going to be between France or England on who's going to win this Six Nations. France of course gave up the last Six Nations with that loss to Scotland which felt completely against the green. Uh, so they won't be happy with losing that Six Nations because of that one game that really let them down. Then of course they got into that final of the Autumn Nations Cup but had to put on such a weak team because of all the restrictions and therefore they weren't able to win that game either so I think France are going to be desperate to show off this Six Nations and they have done quite a lot of work in order to try and get themselves a real deep squad of experienced and talented players so let's take a look at this France team uh, first of all they've loaded up on the forwards for this one they've got some big boys in this forward there's no technical ability here these are all just huge men so starting off with some of the forwards uh, Antonio Bale uh, Bourgerie, who has this one I don't know. I'm sorry if I butcher some French names, by the way. I am terrible at pronunciations. Uh, Camille Chat, who I think had a fantastic tournament. I think Camille Chat, for me, is their leading hooker in the French team. I think he is so good. He's so talented. He seems to just have a centre of gravity that's on the ground. Like, no one can seem to get him off a ball when he gets over. Really looking forward to seeing some more from Camille Chat. Uh, we've got some debutants here. Uh, I believe it's Jorge Henry Colombe. I'm awfully sorry. If I've butchered some names, I'm sure plenty of French supporters will tell me why I'm wrong pronouncing these names. Uh, he's going to be making his debut. I don't know a lot about him, so looking forward to seeing a lot from him. Uh, Jean-Baptiste Gauss, uh, Mohamed Hoas, Hassan Kolinga, who is someone I, I don't know an awful lot. And of course, Julien Marchand, who will be fighting, of course, to try and get that hooker position back. He's a good player. Looking forward to see a bit from Julien Marchand at some point. So a strong set of forwards. Uh, not a lot of technical players in here. Again, they all seem to be just a lot of heavy boys, which I think could be a bit of a downfall for France. I think Camille Chalet is the most technically able in that front pack there to try and win some scrums and get some turnovers. But other than that, they are just huge boys. Immediately looking at people like Antonio who's just a fridge. He's just a big muscle guy who just powers forwards. But I can't say his, uh, his rugby technical ability is particularly brilliant. But hopefully they're going to throw some big boys in, try and power some scrums back over. Onto the locks. We've got a couple of guys who got to play in the Autumn Nations Cup have moved into this team, which is nice to see. Uh, Kylian Garassi, who uh, had an all right game in that England game um, in the final of the Auto Nations Cup but did give away a couple of penalties. Bernard Leroux of course a more typical name to have there uh, Baptiste Prozanti uh, also sort of similar to Garassi gave away a couple of penalties in that final game but experience will come with time they'll move up a little bit um, Swan Rabage who is someone I do not even know the name of so I'm awfully sorry for anyone who's a, a big Swan fan uh, but I'm, uh, I don't know an awful lot about him. Roman Taofai Finua who is of course a giant He's about nine foot tall. Uh, <laughs> he is a big guy. I'm sure he'll be brought in a lot for trying to win some lineouts. And then, of course, Paul Villamis, who is a much more usual name to see in this French squad. Uh, looking at the back line, of course, we have Gregory Aldrit, who will be very happy with his Six Nations performance last year. Got himself quite a few tries, really securing that number eight position. Uh, Dylan Cretin, who is, again, a very decent player. In fact, all these players going through Francois Cross, very good in that sort of six channel. Anthony Gelon who would be nice to see him coming in from that Autumn Nations Cup. Didn't do a lot for me in the Autumn Nations Cup. I do think there was better people in terms of looking at maybe Woki and Makalau, I think, also did really well. But I believe France have got a couple of injuries. That's probably why they're not in. Um, but I think Aldrit, to me, is going to retain that number eight shirt for a little while. Of course, Charles Olivon is going to be in there. Again, a big, big try score. It's nice to see a running seven. We don't have a lot of big runners as number sevens anymore in Northern Hemisphere rugby. So Olivon is very, very good. And then, of course, we have one final one, Tolof Fua, who of course we will be looking forward to seeing a little bit more. So overall from this French pack, in fact this isn't as strong as I thought this French pack was going to be in terms of the forwards. They seem to have gone for a lot of heavy and very tall players rather than a lot of technically able players. I'm sure Aldrit, Olivon, Chat uh, are the three that stand out for me in that in that group of players there. But they've got some big names in there. I'm sure they're trying to increase a bit of depth leading towards this 2023 World Cup. They'll be wanting to improve a little bit. Moving on to the backs, we've got a couple of people missing here. Of course, the standout person missing from this backs will be Roman Entomac. Not in because of injury, so we're down to two fly halves. We're starting off with the scrum halves. Uh, Baptiste Couillou, who did okay, actually, in that Autumn Nations Cup. He didn't have the best uh, immediate start, but he, he built into it a little bit. bit. Uh, but, of course, the standout player in this scrum half for France is Antoine Dupont. I don't think there's a better number nine 
seen in Northern Hemisphere rugby and maybe arguably in the world at the minute. I think Antoine Dupont is exceptional. Such a good running nine. Absolute bullet passes. Also has a great game awareness in terms of kicking over the top. I think he's superb. I'm sure we'll all be seeing a bit of Antoine Dupont on. And then, of course, Baptiste Sarin, who did brilliantly in his game against Scotland. We, of course, we don't get to see Sarin too much because Dupont stands out so much in that scrum half channel. But it'll be nice to see a bit of Baptiste Sarin a little bit. Of course, Entomac now out. So we're down to two fly halves. Big call. Louis Carbonell, who played, again, he had a bit of an issue with his immediate start in that final in the Autumn Nations Cup. Came on and immediately kicked the ball dead about 50 metres further down field. But Matthew Jalibert has steered the ship pretty well considering he's quite a young lad taking over that mantle as first choice fly half. But he's doing a good job, so I'm sure we'll be seeing a little bit of Jalibert a little bit later on. In terms of wingers, Damien Pinot is back in the team, which is a big call. I haven't seen Damien Pinot for a little while considering there are a couple of people putting their names in the basket here for being able to play on the wing. Most of all to me will be, of course, Gabin Villiers. I think Villiers yeah, had a good Autumn Nations Cup. Didn't have a lot of room to work with sometimes, but he's a very quick. He's X7s. So I think he's a good choice to have on that left wing. I think Damien Pinot may have to work a little bit to get that 11 shirt back. Um, we've got, of course, in the 14 channel, we've got Teddy Thomas, who I think will probably regain that 14 shirt for a little while, at least anyway. And then, of course, we have the new boy, Zero Caps, Donovan Tofai Fenua. I'm not sure if there is a relation to Roman over in the locks. Could well be, not 100% sure, not huge on my French club rugby. I don't know a lot of uh, relations to each other. But there's a good couple of wingers in there. I think there's a little bit of weakness in this winger position here. I think there could be some exploits here for other teams to look at. There are, of course, some, some pretty good wingers, but I think there are better wingers on some other teams. So that could be one area to look out for. Looking towards the centres, of course, this is where France seem to dominate. Julien Delbois is very, very good. Gael Ficou is extraordinary. He, we might see him move on to the wing a little bit. I know he's partnered up as a centre in this, but Ficou does move on to that wing a couple of times. The big man on campus, Vaca Tower, which we're all looking forward to seeing a bit more from Vaca Tower. The debut, of course, coming in for Julien Delbois. I hope I'm not butchering his name. Going to be looking forward to seeing what he can do in this role. And then, of course, finally... Arthur Vincent, who is uh, a good centre actually, very sort of technically aware centre, very different to people like Fiku and Vakatawa who are big ball runners, a bit more sort of aware of game management, um, but overall the centre partnerships are going to be pretty strong, I imagine we'll be seeing a lot of Fiku vakatawa partnership throughout this tournament and finally that 15 channel, probably the only team I think I've read so far to have three 15s coming in here, Anthony Bouthier, Bryce Doulan and Thomas Ramos, three big 15s, in fact that is the most competitive area for me of who will play for that. Bryce Doolan was my player of the tournament for the Autumn Nations Cup for anyone who watched our podcast. Um, I think he is exceptional. I think he's really given Bouthier uh, a lot of stuff to work around in order to try and regain that shirt. But of course, Anthony Bouthier was uh, also the man who got that 90-meter kick. I think it was against England in the uh, in the Six Nations. So I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of him around, but I think Bryce Doolan is an exceptional player who we'll be looking forward to seeing in the future. So overall, a strong French team. We were always going to expect a strong French team, seeing as they pretty much have an A team and a B team now they can combine into one. So there's going to be a lot of key areas here. Will they go on to win? Who knows? But as we've done for the rest of these videos so far, we will combine the team that's been announced into what I think is probably the best 15 or the team I would like to see fielded at some point. If you guys have any difference, make sure you drop it down in the comments. Who is your starting 15 for this French squad? So, looking at my best 15, I think starting off, of course, we have to look at Bale going into that number one jersey. I think he is superb in terms of props. He does very well in the scrum. Going to be looking forward to seeing a lot from him. My number two, as I've said earlier, has to be Camille Schatz. He is so good as a player. I think he's highly underrated. He is a very, very strong guy. He's probably one of the few hookers you get to see turning balls over, an actual jackling threat, a real nice utility for the French team to have. Number three, I've got to add him in. It has to be Antonio. I just love him. He's just such a giant man. He just powers through people. His passing and technical running ability is by far some of the worst I would probably say in terms of props in Northern Hemisphere rugby but just due to his sheer size people have to throw two or three men at him which means you
you get to make ground with almost every run and also you get to eliminate some defenders so I think is a very useful player to have in your front row. Looking at the locks uh, I've just gone for sheer height pretty much I've gone for Paul Villamis in terms of much more technical ability at line outs and also when it comes down to breakdowns I think he's very very useful and then Roman Tofai Fanua I think is just a giant I think he wins almost every line out he's ever involved in so they're going to be my 4-5 combination uh, looking into this back row Francois Cross is going to have my six position I think he's an exceptional player a couple of people that I think could have taken that six shirt away from him one could have been Wokey and one could have been Makalau but I think with injuries and people missing I think there's a chance that they're going to be able to see an awful lot of Francois Cross taking that six position seven of course belongs to Charles Olivon that's a huge shirt to try and take away from him he's performing so well he's in good form he's scoring tries in the six nations he's captaining the team well he's got a good respect for the referees nice to see Charles Olivon he's going to be my number seven and number eight I've got to keep with Gregory Aldrit I think he is a fantastic number eight good running good support running eight actually not a lot of HUC doing support runs they sort of run on their own trying to break through lines but Aldrit's one of the few that seems to support a number nine running so I think Aldrit is a very useful number eight to have in there scrum half is only going to belong to one man of course it's going to be Antoine Dupont the best number nine for me probably in the world at the minute I think he is exceptional he's always going to take my number nine shirt number 10 with Entomac out will belong to Matthew Jalibert for me I think Jalibert's done very well taking over from Entomac due to injury and having to try and steer the ship I think he's going to do an awful lot for this French team I think going towards the 2023 World Cup will be looking to be secured in that second position fly half position for France my number 11 shirt I'm going to give to Villiers I think he's a great player I don't think we got to see enough of him in the Autumn Nations Cup I think people shut him down very quickly he's sort of the guy you want to give a bit of space to I think he's going to open up I know a lot of people would probably go for Damien Penault there but I think Villiers to me is going to stand out just a little bit more uh, moving on to the centers I think you've got to go for Fiku in that 12 position and Vaka Tower at 13. It's a tried and tested combination. They both offer two very different skill sets to that 12 and 13. I'm really looking forward to see Vaka Tower disrupt some play and smash it all about a bit. And then of course 14, it's got to go to Teddy Thomas. He's such a good player. He's performing really well currently at club level. Going to be looking forward to seeing him translate that into some good international gameplay. And then finally, this 15 shirt, the most competitive 15 shirt, I think, in the tournament, I'm going to give to Bryce Dulan. I think he impressed me enough in the Autumn Nations Cup to deserve a chance at taking this 15 shirt. Anthony Bouthier is, of course, a very talented 15, but Bryce Dulan seems to offer a great air contest. He is very good in the backfield. He's a great counter runner he seems to be able to do pretty well in terms of kicking one area that I'd like to see him improve on is giving the ball there's a couple of times where he's done great counter runs with men supporting him but doesn't seem to give that pass which I think he needs to work on a little bit a little bit greedy sometimes on the counter run but it's nice to see him do very good work and I think he has to be my number 15 for the tournament but what do you guys think do you agree with my 15 do you have any different choices let me know down in the comments who your 15 would be are you thinking any people have been missed off this list entirely Entirely, who you think you would have added into your French team let me know down in the comments we have done these videos for uh, all the other teams so far so if you want to go check out some of those videos feel free to go by and drop a like if you enjoyed what I had to say and we still got Italy to do so make sure you subscribe to the channel just to keep up to date with all the videos as they are coming out that's all for me today guys I will see you next time bye bye